Exploring lakes, rivers, and reservoirs across the country with an unyielding goal to enlighten viewers from a fisheye perspective. Come along and we'll investigate the habitat. Much more than a fishing trip, this is an eye-opening aquatic experience. Welcome to Kim Stricker's Hook and Look. There you go, there you go, bitch. Mm -hmm. There's definitely more than one bass over here. That's yes. more nice. Sweet tater pie. You're gonna love this footage. Looks like we got enough footage to make a show out of this. I got another nice large mouth here. And a big, big, this is what Hook and Lock is all about. As the local residents awaken to greet the new day, Kim prepares to launch and is then escorted by his friend, Outdoor Channel Vice President of Programming, Mitch Petrie, an avid angler in his own right. Mitch seems quite eager to wet a line today in his home water, Lake Minnetonka. Let's get it on. Fish the weed beds in between. Yeah. How far out you think a bass will travel to hit a worm from a dock? Until he sees you. He'll still go as far until he sees you. Yeah. There's a fish. All right. Good one. A good one. Oh, yeah. Nice fish. <laughs> right, right, Mitch. On the board. Good man. Good man. Now, you got him between the docks, not on a dock. I did, yeah. I would, you know, right off of the dock, but there were just some lily pads, and I just didn't have a shot at the next dock, so I just threw it out there, and he hit it pretty good. Uh -huh. Awesome. Excited. We'll find good more of job. those today. One fish at a time. And so this is a this is a braid, cigar braid. Right, that's their their new color braid. It's a high vis flash green. Yeah, it's a real bright green, so you can see the strikes. Love it. But then I tie on a liter of ten pound cigar abrasics fluorocarbon for its transparency and abrasion resistance around these dock poles. There we go. There we go. A little one. A little no one. Net. No net. Uh, well, I guess you could. <laughs> it's, it saves me the trouble. <laughs> Get him in here. He's a little guy. Just a little guy. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Boomer. Thank you very much. <laughs> we'll be here all week. <laughs> That's awesome. Uh, okay, you, we need you guys to move to the next dock now. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> there you go. That's funny. All right, let's get the three pounders now. Yeah. You know they're in there. <laughs> Watch my line, it'll just pop. That's popping right now. There, that's a better fish. That ain't a sunny. A, yeah, there's a, there's a pole back there. Ooh, yeah, you gotta, you gotta go to the left. You might have to go to the left, because he's... I'll get him, I'll get him. You got him? I'll get him. All right. I got a brace X on there. That's a nice bass, too. <laughs> Nice fish. Real nice. Get, oh, get away from that. Don't, don't go back to that dock. Oh, he's going to go back in into that dock. He wants to get up there. <laughs> <laughs> Very nice. Come on up here. Get up here. We're going to bass. There we go. That's more that like it. Is what we came for, that's, Kim. That's yes. more like it. Absolutely. Look at perfect hook. Stuck oh, look right, at that. right in the nose. Woo, pressure's off the, the host. <laughs> yes, awesome. sir. 
They live under there. Wow. That's, that is a stereotypical Lake Minnetonka bass yep. right there. Nice. Very That's good. That's the start. Awesome. Ah. Thank you, fish. To stay connected with Hook and Look, follow us on Facebook and Instagram. We'll be right back. Hook and Look is brought to you by Strike King Lure Company, number one in fishing lures. Lose, feel the difference. Power Pole, swift, silent, secure. Seaguar, trust Seaguar when everything is on the line. And by Aquaview, reinventing underwater cameras. Good fish. fish. Good one. Good one. Good one. Yeah. Good what did fish. I say? What did I say? That fish should be rewarded, huh? <laughs> All right. <laughs> Woo, a little change of tactic. There we go. We can we can find them bigger, but heck, at least we found the dang things. Location, location, location. Well, I thought changing up to a you know a little side lake instead of off the main lake because yeah we fished the main lake hard and they just weren't on those docks. Who's next? Dude, there, there's actually a big bass back there. Seriously, there's a, I can see him. He's got it. I got it, I got oh, you it. You got him. Dude, that, talk that's about a, That's a good one too. Dude, I'm gonna fake, oh yeah. Get in there. <laughs> <laughs> you saw him. I spotted there. that one. I'm like, dude, there's a fish. <laughs> oh, great. All right. Lake Minnetonka bass. Yeah. Get the hook out. And he was, he, we were pulling away just as. Uh, I saw him and I threw it to him and uh, I was actually surprised he ate it. I thought he was going to run away from us, but we're going to let this guy go and we are going to find a bigger and better one. They're eating the sweet tater pie. Yeah. Get him, Mitch. Good shot. I'm impressed. The thing about dock fishing on this lake is you're not forced to be here just at this at sunrise and that. They'll they'll I mean, bite in the docks in high the noon. High noon, yeah. It's, they get better at high noon. Yeah. I hit this one pretty hard. You're the fish. Yeah. And there goes a fish with it. Nice one too, it looked like. Well, I, I think I'm behind the dock. Oh yeah, that's a nice fish. All right, looks like a nice small I'm a little mouth. nervous, I'm gonna lose him. Nice so small him, mouth. Let's get him in the net. That's a good one. Just take your time with him, take your time with him. That's a nice small mouth. There you go, there you go, bitch. <laughs> good job. Wow, good job. that thing ran a country mile before I set the hook on him. <laughs> Right. And you were saying, I fished this pretty good, and all of a sudden your line took off. Yeah, well, I threw that way back under that dock, man. Wow. Well, nice, this, nice this, fish. This is a nice Minnetonka nice smallmouth right here. Got him hooked right up in the top of the nose there. It's a large mouth and smallmouth on these docks. Yeah, all right. A Minnetonka is improving for smallmouth. Uh -huh. this, is, this is a really good smallie on this lake. It's a double wide dock. I got it way back there, and uh, this twitched back out. Smoked him. He's a nice, he's, he's it's nice one of the best smallies I've ever caught on this lake. So awesome, awesome, fantastic, yeah. fantastic, fantastic. But again, both largemouth and smallmouth. We've we've had little largemouth. We've caught little smallmouth. Right. Caught I'm, a couple nice fish. I'm impressed with the numbers of smallies we're finding. But yeah. They sure like the uh, sweet tater pie. <laughs> sweet tater pie. <laughs> All right. Good job. I've been a fan of uh, Hook and Look for a long time, so when Kim asked to come out to Minnesota and film, I said, absolutely, we're gonna come to Lake Minnetonka. And timing wasn't great for fishing docks, but you know what, there's so many fish on this lake, I thought for sure we'd make it happen. And we did, we grinded it out, we caught some fish, and what was really cool to see was Kim to go underwater 
and actually dive in areas that we had passed through. Coming up, we'll meet the quarry face to face after a few short messages. It's fun to go on to a shoot with our producers and see the effort that they put into it because it's not easy shooting a fishing show and when you add the whole scuba diving underwater element, it takes it to a new level of complexity. Well, let's take a look at this, guys. I've probably fished this dock for 10 years. I've never seen underneath it. I'm excited to see what you find. I got a big school of bluegill here. You're right at the beginning of these uh, five canopies that are pretty deep, so I'm excited to hear what you find underneath those. Oh, there's a nice large mouth. Nice large mouth with a little eye right behind him. Yeah, this thing's got some fish on it. How big is he? About 20 pounds. How big was the walleye? I'm about to say, I mean, he was about, oh, I'd say, 19 inches or so. I got another nice large mouth here, about two and a half pounds. And a big pig. This one's probably four or better. This one's a pig. He's a good actor. Kim, what's he holding on to? Is he just sitting out in the open or suspended? Just hanging. I want to give him a close-up of my wacky worm. <laughs> this mallard's a big fan of your show. Kim, I bet all the times I fish these docks, I'm just not going deep enough. These fish, looks like they're holding back to the wall, and they're very hard to get to with all these boats, but I know next time I come here, I'm going to have to work harder to get the baits back further. I think you're right. <laughs> okay, pay close attention. This is good stuff. My surveillance validated the fact that the bass were indeed positioned up under the shallow portion of the docks. With that said, I want you to take notice as to how secure the bass appear to be up under the low overhead canopy. This is a behavior I've witnessed time after time, and this comfort zone is likely the primary reason why these bass are parked here. In addition, this particular set of docks also offered a bonus appeal with a close deep water retreat. When the bass got spooked, they would flee towards the deep open area in front of the dock and their demeanor radically changed. They seemed to be visibly uneasy and wanted to be back within the security of the shallow shaded comfort zone. If I sat still, they would settle down and gradually return. So it stands to good reason that the bass sheltered way back under the canopy would be much more likely to bite within that comfort zone. So my advice to you viewers is, make every effort to reach far back under the docks and skipping a wacky rigged ocho is a perfect way to accomplish that task. I've kind of stirred it up in here. But yeah, I'm gonna sit here for a bit. There's a lot of fish here. I'm getting walleye. There's a nice walleye right there. Just kind of suspended. So you're on the outside of the docks now. You're still seeing fish? That's probably like a four pounder. Push that four pounder back into the docks there. We'll catch him later. I did, that's where you hit it. And there's a lot of coontail under this dock. There's quite a bit of crappie here, though. Get some good crappie footage. I got some walleyes right here. I got to figure out how to catch those walleyes. I, I didn't know there was walleyes there. I've never caught one in this area. Looks like we got enough footage to make a show out of this experience. There ain't no doubt. Get way back into this stuff to get to these fish. There's a three pounder on the left side of this dock, way up tight, under this matted stuff. I just tucked in there. It's right under this stuff, right here. This is absolutely awesome. Hey, this is what hook and lock is all about.
Want more underwater content? Subscribe to our YouTube channel. We'll be right back. This portion of Hook and Look is brought to you by Ranger Boats, still building legends one at a time. Evan Rood, the only outboard that lets you have it all. Sims Fishing Products, the choice of professional guides and anglers worldwide. Trick Step, because getting in and out of your trailer boat should be easy. And by Indian River, Michigan Tourist Bureau. Pure waters, pure trails, pure north. Welcome back to Hook and Look. Following Kim's underwater exploration, Mitch Petrie decided to conduct a Facebook Live event to publicize the experience in real time. Hey everybody, Mitch Petrie here with Outdoor Channel. We are on the water with Kim Stricker, the host of Hook and Look. We are on Lake Minnetonka, beautiful Minnetonka here, and we are wrapping up what has been an awesome shoot. Kim, let us tell us a little bit about uh, what we experienced last day. Well, I just got out of the water. You could tell I'm hoarse from uh, breathing that compressed air, but I just got on a stack of fish on this dock right here. I mean, three to five pound largemouth. It also had walleye. It had, like, schools of four or five walleye, probably about 17 to 18 inches, and uh, several crappie. But uh, we're gonna try to fish it and see if I didn't spook them enough and see if we can catch some fish off All it. Right. I know a lot of you always wonder what goes into making a fishing show, and, and, and hosts like Kim tend to make it look easy. I, can, I tell you what, I've, I've witnessed a fair amount of these, and nobody goes through what Kim goes through to make this show happen. We fished hard for a day and a half, uh, but once we put all of the rods and tackle away, Kim pulls out the uh, scuba gear. We started down around that corner, and Kim went underwater, under docks filming. He had encounters with bass, no muskies, but bass, walleye, crappie, go around. And he's going through and he's looking, I don't know if you can see weed beds. He was digging weed beds. Here we have Jeremy Salo. He's filming for Hook and Look. Jeremy, say hello. How's it going? He normally doesn't get this opportunity to be in front of the camera. I have a voice. We went down <laughs> here. Look at that. We got Tim DeLarm from Alaska Outdoors tuning in from Alaska. Hey, Tim. So uh, why don't we get into position here? And, and Kim, as long as I have some battery power, we'll stay on you here. Let's see. Um, it's very cool. I was actually uh, up on the boat with headphones on and I could hear what Kim was saying and he was talking about what he was seeing. But like you, I'm probably not going to see it until uh, we see the show. But uh, up on the back side of these docks, he got on a couple of good sized bass, one that was pushing five pounds. Um, and they would come in and, and many of them um, would sit tight and allow him to actually film them. He said he could almost reach out and hit them with the camera. Good actors. I'm going in where they're at right now. We've got Steve Panaz, Hall of Fame angler Steve Panaz, tuning in live here, and he recognizes the docks we're on. Um, <laughs> yeah, there's, there's not a lot of secrets on Lake Minnetonka. We have a very healthy bluegill population, we discovered, because everywhere we went, <laughs> within seconds, your bait was covered uh, with bluegills. And next time you bring that up, why don't you show everybody what we've been throwing here today? I'll bring it in. This is a Strike King. Ocho stickworm, but this is their new color. It's called Sweet Tater Pie. It's it's got a multitude of colors. It's got yellow and orange and green pumpkin, black, and, but they are eating it. Yeah, and tell us about the hook. Uh, that is a uh, Ultra Point by Mustad. This is uh, their new Titan X Wacky Nico hook, but it's yeah. got a little weed guard on there. Yeah, hold on. I'm going to grab your tool. So. Why don't you show everybody this tool as well? Right, this is an Owacky tool. This is the original Owacky tool, which is the tool that puts on the little O-ring. All that, all it does is slide this little O-ring up here, and it goes on the worm, and you plop it on, and you put your hook through the O-ring and not through the worm, so it doesn't tear your worm up. You know, your worms will last a lot longer. Got but it. That is the deal. An O Wacky Rigged Ocho. All right, so Kim is skipping up. How long do you think it <laughs> took before the fish kind of cleared out and then cleared back in? Um, there's a fish right there. All I right. have got a bass on right now. I have got a bass. Whoa! Oh, we're gonna make him a star. <laughs> Look at that. And it's a nice one. <laughs> it's a nice one too. I'm your net Come man. What do you, do you need me to net him? There, look at that, that's a good bass. 
good, Beth. Whoa, 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 whoa. All right. I'm, I can net him myself. You all right, you net him. I'll fit. Oh. I'll, I'll net him. <laughs> this is awesome. I found these fish diving. Now you get to hold one. All right. Look at that. As we speak. Good solid three pounder. <laughs> All right. Wow, that's how it's done. That is how it doesn't done. get any better than that. And you can see that little sliver. That's a number four Titan X hook, Ultra Point. It gets in to that bony stuff and sets. Incredible. Wow. That is how you do it. <laughs> Doesn't get any better than that. Ladies and gentlemen, Kim Stricker, Hook and Look, tune in next year. This episode is probably going to not air it. until next January or so. Yep. Kim, thanks for joining. Congratulations on a great outing. Hey, thank you for bringing me here. Thank you, Fish. <laughs> Was that freaking <laughs> awesome? Was that freaking And you were filming, right? Yeah. We couldn't have scripted that live event any better. Present the content. Cue the fish. Nothing to it. I want to thank Mitch for his professionalism, and I think he proved to us all that he's quite competent with a rod and reel as well. We'll see you next week on Hook and Look. Hook and Look is a Kim Stricker production.